Welcome back to Sideyard Electronics. Today I hope to control this BMW battery box with this zombie verter and I hope to bring you along. So first let me just tell you that this box is empty. This battery pack is empty. I removed the modules out of it. That's why I can play fast and loose with it. That's why I can easily lift it, okay? It's just a shell for demonstration purposes. So what do I mean control this battery box? What do I mean control this battery pack? How do you control a battery? Because we're dealing with such high voltage and a lot of amps, this battery pack can be live at all times. It can't be hot. You can't just connect orange cables, high voltage cables to this orange plug and get amps and power juice voltage out of it, if you will. It doesn't work like that. There's a gatekeeper inside there that BMW calls a safety box, a BMW safety box. Sometimes it's referred to as a contactor box. And that box contains what you could think of as switches. That turn on both the negative side and the positive side, and then allow the power to come out of the battery pack. So inside of this silver box is yet another box, and that's what we're going to be technically controlling. Here I have the BMW safety box. This very box came out of this pack, okay? If you watch my other videos, I actually took this pack apart, and this is what I extracted out of it. Technically, on the back, there's yet another box. The little box on the back is the master BMS module. But we're not concerned with that. We're not gonna be talking about battery management system in this video. We have enough to talk about when we're just talking about the safety box. Okay, so inside of the battery pack, we have battery modules or batteries, and then we also have a contactor box. This box, is what turns the pack on and off, if you will. But I wanna also show you what's inside of this box. Let's keep going with this deeper dive. So inside of the safety box, we have two contactors. They're identical, but one is referred to as a negative contactor, and the other one is referred to as a positive contactor. Uh, I think of contactors as relays on steroids. They're essentially relays, but they're designed to carry higher current, deal with uh, more voltage potential, okay? But that's what's inside of that. I'll show you another example of contactors. This is just another example of them. So we can think of the one with the black wires as a negative contactor, the one with the orange or red wires as a positive contactor. These are just, you know, the round kind, barrel-like, but this might be something you may have seen. The other ones are made by Panasonic and they just happen to be squarish or rectangular. Anyway, that's what's inside of the safety box. And technically, inside of this safety box, there's actually a relay. So the relay is part of a pre-charge circuit. This box is very important. It's not just designed for the safety of us humans getting electrocuted, if you will. Uh, it's also designed to protect the inverter, the capacitor in the inverter. And so if we just turned on the negative contactor, then we turn on the passive, a positive contactor, we would fry, blow up the capacitor inside of the inverter, uh, referred to as letting the black smoke out. That's where this guy comes in, and this relay works in conjunction with a resistor. This relay trickles a little bit of electricity into the capacitor inside of the inverter, and allows it to warm up, if you will. Once it gets to a certain voltage, then the positive contactor gets closed, and then more power flows into that inverter, into that capacitor inside the inverter. 
We're going to talk about the pre-charge circuit in another video. At this time, I just wanted to take a little bit of a deeper dive so you get an idea of what's in this box, okay? And when we talk about controlling, all we're going to be doing really is opening and closing the contact points inside of these contactors and this relay to allow electricity out of the battery pack, okay? But I wanted you to see what's inside there. So what is a zombie verter? What is this black box? This black box is essentially a brain module for a DIY electric vehicle. It is offered by EVBMW and you can visit evbmw.com and get more information. Check out their web shop. But what's inside here? I don't know, let's take a look. So it looks like inside here we have a, a big circus board and a baby circuit board. The little one here is nothing more than a Wi-Fi card. And the big one, that is where all the magic happens. On this circuit board, we have a 56 pin connector. So actually there's a pair of what's 56 and half 28 pin connectors. And we will go over which ones we use to talk to the BMW battery pack behind me, the safety box inside of that battery pack. This uh, device is designed to control almost half a dozen different vehicles and electric components and peripherals, chargers, DC-DC converters, heaters, and of course, safety boxes and current shunts. So I say that because don't be intimidated by the 56 pins. I can't think of any application that will require you to use all of them because it's designed for multiple and different vehicles. Different vehicles will require different pins, different pinouts. And so it's very unlikely that you will wire every single pin. So right away, don't think that you have to wire everything. Believe it or not, to control that safety box, all we need is just two pins from this connector. We talk from this uh, controller, this brain module, to the safety box over something called CAN bus, or CAN. CAN stands for Controller Area Network. Um, it's comparable to LAN or WAN, local area network, wide area network, and I call it car area network. So it's basically how electronic devices in modern cars communicate. CAN will run things like beeping at you when your door is ajar. You know, it may control your AC, it may control your rear windshield wiper, it may control other things inside your car. You know, so it's a uh, very powerful, uh, very efficient, I'm not sure if it's actually a protocol, but a uh, communication, way of communicating between components inside of cars. So we will use CAN to control this box. Those of you who have seen my videos know that I always buy electronic components with pigtails. Essentially, a external connector with about a foot worth of wire on it. And I did the same for this battery pack. So eventually what I wanna do is control this safety box that lives inside of this battery pack via this nice external connector. However, Damien, who reverse engineered this uh, recommends or demonstrates how to plug in directly into the safety box into this connector here. So for the sake of this video to keep things simple and just to test the zombie's ability to control the safety box, we're going to talk directly to it. So I'm going to put this aside and maybe do a follow-up video of how I got this connector working. 
if we were to open up this box, we would find two wire harnesses inside there. One would be for the BMS and the second one would be to talk to the safety box. And I've thinned one out and that's what I have here. This is sort of my bench test wire harness. I happen to have a couple of bigger packs like this one from the BMW 530E. This is from the 330E. This one has five modules in it. The 530E has six modules. But believe it or not, the safety box is the exact same part number. So what we need to plug in here, we need five pins and five wires. And those are two for the positive, pin 12 and 14 are positive, pin three is negative, pin one is can high and pin 10 is can low, like so. Okay. So I like to remove all the conduit from the wires. I've had cases where I was working on wiring projects and wires would change colors midstream in the middle of the harness, in the middle of the conduit. They would just switch from like yellow to blue or something. So off of here, we have two reds. Those are gonna be pin 12 and 14, and those are going to be our positive leads. Of course, this just loves to get tangled. Not today. Well, maybe. So the two reds both will just run to positive. We can use uh, positive from the battery. I think this will handle 12 volts. Uh, always use a fuse. And then there is pin three, which is the ground. Jeez, I'm looking like a fool. And then one easy way to tell what is your CAN bus or what wires, it's always a pair of wires and they are twisted. Okay, twisted pair. And these give us the uh, CAN high and CAN low. I shouldn't have put this connector back in its housing because now I can't tell which one is which and of course I didn't label these. I think worst case scenario if you get them wrong is that it just won't work. But let me see. I should really know this. Okay. Yellow is pin one, so that's high. Yellow is high and black with purple stripe is low. Okay. So this will just plug right into the safety box. Can I do this? What is wrong with me? this way great there it is hold it edit edit it's been a while folks what is happening okay that was easy So this is part of the stock harness, okay? We didn't have to buy any connector. We didn't have to pin it. Um, we just use five wires out of it. And again, the two reds will be our positive. I will probably use a bench power supply. I usually, for something like this, I like to put like a one amp fuse in it. If it blows, then I'll put in a two amp fuse, you know? And if that blows, I'll go to maybe like a five. Super scientific but it has worked for me. 
Okay, so we have power and we have this can. So this is the battery side. This is how we will connect to this box. For this test, we don't need um, a battery pack here. We could use a single module or we could just simulate a uh, battery, a battery if you will, by connecting to the inputs of it with, a, with another bench power supply. And even without any high voltage or anything connected to it, the contactors will click when we manipulate them, when we control them with the zombie.